I'm Andres. And I'm Nazareth. And welcome back to AO Kids Sunday School Live. Live! We're so glad to have you back this Easter Sunday. I know, can't you guys believe it's Easter already? already? That's true. This year has been passing by so fast. I know, like April? April, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Coming up, right? Or well, it's already, it's already here. here. Right? It's already here. And, and, you know, you know, it's just been so many months already. I just feel like 2021 just started. That's right. And, you know, but I'm only hoping that the school goes by fast and then summer lasts all year long. I know, but I just feel like it goes faster and faster and faster every year. But Easter Sunday is so, so special. That's why I'm wearing yellow. I'm wearing like a, like a very spring type of color also, like orange. Like you go outside, you see a flowers. Very spring. You know, yeah, because people on Easter Sunday, they usually like wear dresses or skirts. And they wear, wear really bright colors, like light blue, mm. pink, like all those types of colors. Yeah. Because that day, today is just a really happy day. That's right. Today we are celebrating, just like how on Christmas we're celebrating Jesus' birth. I would say that Easter is even more important than Christmas and even more of a bigger celebration. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like there's a lot of people that really don't know that, like, they know Easter is a holiday, but they don't really know, they didn't even know that Easter ties in with God and that there is a correlation between Easter, the holiday, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. But that's what we're going to talk about today. That's right, that's right. We hope you guys had an amazing spring break. What did you guys do? I know. I went to the pool and I hung out with my dog and I went on walks nice. and I just had so much and I slept a lot. Oh yeah, no homework. <gasps> no, I had homework. Yeah, I don't know why teachers give homework if we're on break. I'm but so remember to always do your homework. That's right. Well, spring week was a lot of fun. We're closing it off with a fun celebration with Easter. But you know what's kind of even more fun? I don't want to say more fun, but part of this fun that we're having today. <gasps> it's when we stand up. Get on our feet. For Praise, praise and Worship. <laughs> Cause we're stirring up deep, deep well 
to get into today because Easter is part of one of my favorite stories because you know actually the whole Bible is kind of like one big story because of like history you know what I mean but yeah and you know the Bible has so many different stories but did you know that Matthew Mark Luke and John are the Gospels and they're very specific books because those books four books focuses on Jesus's life only like they start from his birth to all the way to his resurrection and so with all of this happening you know throughout the Bible you know Easter Sunday is kind of like what the whole Bible has been leading up to this is it this is like the, the season finale kind of like you know the Avengers all the movies happen and then there was end game and it was awesome yeah this is like the end game of the Bible and there's like crazy plot twists and things happening and I can't wait to get into it but first we have a very special verse from a very special friend that wants to share it with us that's right so take it away Hi, you kids. My name's Yanar and I'm going to be sharing a verse for you guys today. So it says, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26. So what this verse means is when we accept Jesus in our heart as our Lord and Savior, we are inviting him into our lives to change it for the good. But the day that we are no longer on this earth, we get to go to heaven. That's why the prayer of salvation is so, so important so that we are guaranteed eternal life. But once we do the prayer of salvation, we are believing that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected on the third day. I encourage you guys to read this first. Back to Nazareth and address, bye. Wow, thank you so much. I don't know, that verse was pretty powerful, don't uh, you think? I'm very related to what we're talking about today. So much so that I think I want to go over it one more time. I think that's a great idea. We should repeat that verse one more time all together. And we're reading from John 11, 25 through 26. And it says, Jesus told her. Jesus told her. I am the resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and life. Anyone who believes. Anyone who believes. In me. In me. Will live. Will live. Even after dying. Even after dying. Everyone who lives in me. Everyone who lives in me. And believes in me. And believes in me. Will never ever die. Will never ever die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Amen. Amen. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. Wow, that verse sounds really powerful. It sounds like God really saved someone's uh -huh. life. Uh-huh, <laughs> saved somebody's life. That's what Easter is all about. And so... I know, I kind of really, really want to know what this Easter story is. What's this plot twist? What's this, you know, the, the tip of the mountain? What is this moment that everyone has been waiting for? Oh, uh -huh. it's like the peak. This is like the climax of the story. You That's know what right. I, mean? I really want to know what it is. So... Why don't we check it out right here? Hmm. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Wahoo! 
The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus ah, come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> and the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. And ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Hey, oh! Ah! And then, for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Whoa! That is truly amazing. That was epic. That was <laughs> Stupendous. Mm -hmm. And you know, the story of Easter, right? Which is, you know, I will finally say it was the story of Jesus dying on the cross and resurrecting afterwards. That's the big part. 
you know, it's so amazing because not only is it like a great story to tell, obviously, but it's so impactful on each and every single one of us. That's right. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but the Friday that just passed is actually known as Good Friday. And this Sunday is Easter, right? But I don't know if you've ever heard, but some people say Happy Easter and some people say Happy Resurrection Sunday. That's right. Because today was the day that Jesus resurrected after he died mm -hmm. on the cross for our sins. Easter is all about, like, like you said, Resurrection Sunday. But sometimes we can get kind of confused. Maybe some of you guys didn't even know that this story was what, Jesus, was what Easter is all about. Sometimes the world can confuse us so much with bunnies and, and chocolates eggs and, and eggs and, and stuff like that. Stuff that has nothing to do with Jesus. And we get confused. But now we know. Now we know that Easter is actually a celebration that we have where we celebrate the fact that Jesus came back to life after he died for our sins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, we want we might want to just go from the very beginning of the story because this story is kind of Oh, I know long. where the beginning is. It's Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God, God created, created the, the heavens, heavens and, and the earth. earth. No, 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 no. I mean the beginning of this story, the oh. beginning of Easter or, or the beginning of... What started Easter? <laughs> well, we know the story that Jesus was born, like the whole Christmas story, Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. And then he grew up and he did many, many, many miracles. He healed people. He set them free. He raised them from the dead. He, uh, like, he gave people, like, like, he multiplied a bunch of, like, a little bit of food into a lot of bit of food for everybody to eat. He did pretty awesome stuff. He even walked on water. He even walked on water. and, and you know, I've tried to walk on water many times, and I failed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It happens. Anyways. But you know, the, well, you know what Jesus says? What? He says you need to have a faith of a mustard seed. To move um, mountains. Yes, yes. That's right. Anyways, anyways, anyways. That's a part. So... After all of these miracles and everything that has happened, you know, people were believing in Jesus. People were accepting him as the Messiah. And what does Messiah mean? It means this person who God has sent as the Son of God to save everybody. Yes, but did you know that there was actually a lot of people who did not like Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine? There's this guy who's doing miracles, who's helping a lot of people, and he's just doing a lot of good. Like, he's helping heal people, helping people that are sick. But, you know, there's still people who don't like him. People don't like that he was claiming to be the Son of God and they didn't believe him. They thought that he was false. That's right. Mostly Jewish officials and priests and people that were supposed to be of the Bible and of the Scripture. Those are the ones that were not really believing in Jesus for one reason or another. And so much so that they were so mad about it that they decided that they wanted him dead. Yes, they actually wanted to crucify him on a cross. Mm -hmm. They wanted to crucify him on a cross. But you know what? Jesus, you know, this kind of made Jesus really worried and kind of made Jesus really sad. But Jesus knew that he needed to be crucified on a cross in order to save us for our sins. That's right, because some of you guys might be wondering, wait a minute, Andres, wait a minute, Nazi. I thought that Jesus was the Son of God, but that he was God, basically. If, if, if he's God, then how did he die? And, and if he's God, then why didn't he just freeze time? and then find everybody that wanted to kill him, and then punch him in the face. Yeah, because you know Jesus could do everything. Anything, exactly. But I mean, I don't really think Jesus would punch anyone No, I don't think he would punch him in the, the face, face because he's a good God. And actually, the reason that he allowed himself to be crucified was because he loved us so much. And he knew that even though he was gonna, like, he was gonna experience all this pain, and he was gonna suffer, and it was gonna be really hard for him. Mm -hmm. He knew that he had to go through all that pain and all that suffering mm -hmm. in order that, he, in order for him to have a close relationship and intimate wait a minute, relationship wait a minute, with wait a minute, you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm confused. Well, so you're saying that if you really love somebody, then you have to go and crucify yourself for them? No, 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 no. The only reason why Jesus was even able to do that in the first place was because he lived a perfect sinless mm, life here on earth that's right so let me explain let me explain, explain. the bible says now and i've said this times and times before that for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our lord that's right and basically when we sin that means that we must die and we must suffer punishment in hell that's but right. the good news of the gospel is that Jesus took our place. 
He took our sin, he took our shame, he took all of our dirtiness and he put it over himself for us. And even though it should have been us having a terrible, terrible punishment, like the cross was, Jesus took that for himself. He suffered for us so much and even died for us so that we could be free. Yeah, so basically God, you know, paid the price for us. Mm -hmm. So like, imagine like, you know, you stole a candy bar and okay. then you were going to go to timeout. It's basically like Jesus going to timeout for you. That's a great, that's a great analogy. Good job. Just so that you can understand a little bit better. Yeah, uh, but, you know, the most important part is because we can believe that Jesus died on the cross for us, right? Because I bet, you know, a lot of our grand abuelitas and a lot of our, you know, older people, and sometimes you see it like in a Catholic church, like a picture or a statue or like a glass thing of Jesus on the cross like this, you know, you know, like <laughs> dead. But, you know, we don't really like to portray, or like, like on the little necklaces, you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. We don't really like to portray Jesus on the cross because even though it's really important and even though it did happen, it's amazing. Jesus did not stay on the cross. Amen. <laughs> Jesus did not stay on the cross. Jesus died. He was buried in the, in the tomb and then resurrected and he came back to life. So when we see a cross, for example, Nazareth has a little uh, cross necklace covered by her mic. Right here. Right there, right there. You guys can see it. Um, the cross is a reminder of the good news and of the wonderful, wonderful thing that Jesus did for us. But Jesus is not portrayed on the cross because he did not stay on the cross. That's right, because God did this amazing, beautiful thing. He did his purpose, what he was called to do here on earth for us, that he could have a relationship with you because he loved you so much. But, you know, Jesus, his purpose was not only to, you know, die on the cross and to be crucified on the cross, but he actually, you know, he went into the bottoms of the earth and went into hell to grab a key for you and I so he could unlock this thing and unleash this veil where he cut the veil so that we could have a relationship with him. That's right. And you were saying that God loves us so much. Well, if you're wondering, if you're ever feeling down about yourself or don't know, like, does God even love me? Well, something that I saw that I always wanted to tell the kids, right, was that Jesus loves you this much. Because you see, like, he, like, you know, the, the cross, like, he, like, how much he loves you? <laughs> Not this much. He loves you this much. And it's so powerful, it's right? True. It's, it's so true. It's very true. God loves you so, 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 so much. And he did so much for you guys. And and he fought for you. And, mm -hmm. and he died for you. All so that he could have just the chance to have a relationship with you. Because mm -hmm. I don't even know if you guys know. But, you know, God didn't create us like robots. But God gave us a choice of whether we wanted to have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So, in reality, God died for all of us, you know. And when he was being crucified, he had your name, your face in his heart, in his mind, and he died for you, you know, giving you the option of whether or not you wanted to have a relationship with him. And that's just because he's that amazing and that mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jesus is also called in the Bible, the lamb of God. And why? Because back in the day, people would sacrifice lambs and animals to as, you know, if they sinned, so they could be forgiven, right? But Jesus was the Lamb of God. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And he was the last ever thing that he needed to die for our sins. Because now the significance of the, the torn veil or that curtain that you guys saw in the video. And like in the, in the temple that ripped like, like this, ripped like this, right? That, that curtain separated God's holy presence from everybody else, right? Yeah. But now that it was ripped, it meant that anybody could go in to the presence of God through the blood of Jesus and through the name of Jesus. That's right, because before, when Jesus didn't die on the cross for us, only like the highest priest and only the holiest of holiest people could even enter the presence of God because it was that, you know, sacred. Mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. that like separated. It was that, you know, unique, right? But God didn't want that. God wanted to have communion with you. He wanted to have a relationship with you. He wanted to be close with you once again. So when he died on the cross, he made sure that veil was completely torn apart so that now we can speak with him and and that we could be with him mm -hmm. always. So I want to reemphasize this one more time that Jesus was born here, you know, and Jesus lived a perfect life. He never ever sinned. When he never ever did anything wrong, not one thing wrong. He never messed up. And still he made the decision to go and die on the cross for us. And not only that, but he resurrected. That's right. He resurrected on the third day. Day. Uh, Whose favorite number is three? Uh, my favorite number is like seven, I think. But that's a good number still, because remember God created the the or the 
everything in seven days. You know what I mean? That's a very good number. Anyways, anyways. Um, can you imagine if you're like one of the disciples and Jesus says like, I'm going to die, but I'll be back. And then he goes and he dies. And then for three whole days, he's just still dead. That must have sucked. I know, but he did resurrect and some lady went to go visit him and he was no longer in his mm -hmm, tomb. Mm -hmm, because since The tomb Jesus, was empty. That's right. Because Jesus was such, you know, so popular, right? Because, you know, he was Jesus and, and everyone believed in him as to be as the Messiah. When they buried him in the tomb, he, there was two Roman guards that guarded and they, they and there was a big, big, big stone rock, like a boulder, like very heavy, like, like you could push it, like it's like pushing a wall basically, like it's, you could push it and it's not gonna move. That was covering up this this tomb. That's basically a little little mini cave where his body was, right? And you know, there was no way this thing was moving, but an angel of the Lord opened up the tomb so Jesus could come out. I know, and Jesus came out and he showed that he, he uh, yet again, after all the times he proved that he was the son of God, he yet again proved that he was the son of God because, you know, he was there in person. Like, imagine seeing, you know, Jesus die on the cross and then you, you think you're never going to see him again because, you know, science and he's actually dead. Uh -huh. But the next thing you know, you see him and he's alive again. It, it, it's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. That's right. And so he stayed alive for 40 more days on this earth. That's right, right where he talked to his disciples, mm -hmm. he mentored them, he taught them everything, he gave them all the information that he could in those 40 days, everything that he thought that they needed before he had to... Ascend. Leave. Into heaven, that's right, he left back to heaven. And so what's really important is that, you know, Jesus, only not, actually not that many people were able to see him for 40 days, it's like 10 more days in a month. When mm -hmm. he came back, right? But what he said to his disciples is to make disciples of all the nations, was to go out to all the world and tell them of the good news that Jesus died for their sins and resurrected, and that one day we're going to see him again if we accept him in our hearts, and to go tell everybody, and if they believe, they will be saved. That's right, and that's what Easter is all about. We're mm -hmm. celebrating the fact that Jesus got resurrected, that no, not only did he die for our sins, but he did not stay dead. He resurrected for us. He was there in person, and people saw him, and, mm -hmm. and we celebrate this on this day, this amazing miracle, this amazing story, and this good news that Jesus is our Savior. That's right. This is a very good news, and so that is what we are celebrating, and you know, uh, it's it's so amazing, right, to be able to have Easter. Like, you, you think of Easter, and some people think of, like, oh, my gosh, I have to get dressed up cute, I have to put my old tie, I have to go to church, I sit through service, da 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 da, da. But, you know, really, we like to think of it, like Easter. It's, it's a party. It's a celebration. That's Jesus right. is back to life. And because it's a party, I think today, earlier, we, we had a little party here at AO Church, am I right? That's right. We had a Circus! A circus! Were that you guys was awesome. there? Because I was there. Uh huh. And you guys might have noticed that today our AO Kids is airing a little bit later. But that's because we don't want any of you guys to miss the opportunity to go, you know, to see AO Kids, of course. Obviously. But to go to church to view this amazing circus that we ha all had together where we were celebrating that Jesus is alive again. Mm -hmm. And this is a great idea. So from now on, we're going to be airing our AO kids a little bit later so you guys can act we want to encourage you guys to come to our services in person because we want to see you guys that's right so we're going to air it later so you guys can not only come to church in person if you uh -huh. can but you guys can also watch ao kids later that's right so we want to encourage you guys all of you guys watching right now next sunday plan to be there at ao church that's right because we will be there and we want to see you guys there and also one more thing about Easter, guys, okay. is that, you know, Jesus, you know, he won the victory. He won the battle. And, you know, we are warriors and we are like Victorians and we win every single battle that we enter because we have Jesus in our lives. But, I mean, we have to have Jesus in our lives, right? That's right. So, I mean, how do we even accept Jesus into our lives? Wow. A real simple question. All you need to do to accept Jesus in your heart, to accept this good news that Easter is all about, and to, you know, and when you accept him, it's kind of like your ticket into heaven. All you have to do is do a simple prayer. I want to do this simple prayer. Do any of you guys want to do this simple prayer? Well, if you do, it's called the prayer of salvation. And the Bible says that all you need to do to be saved is believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. 
That's right. So let's do it. Repeat after me. Let's do it. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness. Of my sins. Of my sins. I thank you. I thank you. For dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. And resurrecting. And resurrecting. Three days later. Three days later. Jesus. Jesus. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I trust in you. I trust in you. All the rest of my days. All the rest of my days. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Fist bump. Nice, nice, nice. So, you know, this Easter special Sunday service live thingy was really jam-packed that I think we should give them three key points that are super important about today's lesson. All right, let's do it. So. Point number one, I'll do it first. Let's do it. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's right. And that leads us to point number two, where Jesus resurrected on the third day. And point number three, we have victory in Jesus because he is alive. That's right. So always write those down and always remember that Easter Sunday is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Now comes one of my favorite parts of our episode I know what time it is. It's A.O. Quiz! So we have a couple questions for you guys that we want you guys to answer to make sure that you were paying attention to today's lesson. Mm -hmm. So why don't you ask number one? All right, I'll ask question number one. Who moved the stone? And which stone we're talking about? We're talking about the stone that was covering the tomb of Jesus. Who moved that stone? Hmm, make sure you look at all your choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the correct answer, answer is, is A. The angel. A angel, kind of there. Kind of pretty good there, pretty good there. I like that. It, one. it was giving you a little hint. Uh -huh. a little bit. <laughs> All right, number two. How many days was Jesus dead? Mm. Mm. How many days was he buried? He was dead, yeah, he was dead. How many days did it take him to get resurrected? Uh -huh. <laughs> And the, the correct, correct answer, answer is B. B. <laughs> three. Yeah, three, three. Sorry, I thought you had it there. B three. Okay, why don't you ask the last question? And the last question: What was the crown made of that they put Ooh, on Jesus? This they, is, they said this in the video. This is a good question. Make uh -huh. sure you look at all your answer choices. And the, the correct, correct answer, answer is. is See, as in crown. I mean, as in thorns. But yeah, see, crown, thorns. Yeah. Crown of thorns. thorns. They put him a crown of thorns. Which must have hurt really, really bad to <gasps> Did you hear that? <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> Game, Game time! So what are we playing today? Today we are playing scavenger hunt. And while... Scavenger hunt! <laughs> That's right. And we're going to give you guys only two minutes to find five, five items. Five items that we, we, we put our heads together. We were thinking about five items that you probably have lying around somewhere in mm. your house and that we probably have lying around somewhere here in the studio. Uh-huh. So... So, we should these list are the five items. items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, number one, a battery. Number one, a battery. That's going to be kind of hard to find. Maybe I might leave that one for last. It's like in a drawer somewhere in my house. Number, number two, two, a mechanical pencil. Not a, I mean, no, sorry, sorry, a real pencil, a real wooden pencil. Not a mechanical pencil. Uh, a real... Like a number two real pencil. Who has okay, that anymore? Okay, number three, a little square of toilet paper. <laughs> I think we all... I, I hope we all have that. I think we all need that. I think we all need that. Ew! Okay, number four? <laughs> number four is gonna be... Hand soap! Hand soap, that's right, hand soap. Because we all need to wash our hands. That's right, we should all Especially be Especially during our hands. pandemic. That's right, that's right. <laughs> And number five is gonna be a picture frame. Because that is right. You can have any picture in it, but probably you know, like you or like you when you were a baby, like your family or something. I don't know. Like, it can be anything really. All right, so I think we should stand up and get ready. So are uh, we gonna divide the items? Two minutes on the clock. All right, two, two minutes only. That's 120 seconds you guys have to find all five of these. So make sure you look at the list and try to memorize it in your head so that you don't have to come back to the you know, screen to see what the items are again. So are we ready? I'm On ready. Marks. Get, Get set. set. You got two minutes. Go, 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 go. go. go.
pencil. I mean, regular, <laughs> regular wooden pencil. I, mean. I don't know if this counts. This counts. This counts. <laughs> Because we're online, you know, I'm talking to go online. Who even has regular pencils? Okay, anymore? let's show all our items. Item number one, a battery. Who got uh, this one? I got it from the TV remote that I found. It's a very big battery. All right, item number two was the pencil. pencil. Well, we all saw that Andres brought the pencil. Okay, yeah, we saw that, we saw that. Okay, item number three was the Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Wait a minute. Did you use this? <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe for my boogers. Uh, ew. <laughs> <laughs> Item number four. Hand soap. Is this soap or lotion? Let me, Let put me it see. <laughs> Let me see. Coconut wash. It's good. It's Let good. me put it on you. Okay, wait, wait. There's no water. Stop. <laughs> oh, now you can use this tissue to clean Smells it up. Smells good though. Oh. Just show them your hands. Yeah, oh, no. now I have to go wash my hands for real. And I... the last item was a photo frame, picture frame. Hey, look Here who it is. Have... Our senior pastors. Pastor, Pastor Delgado. Delgado and Marianne. Yes. <laughs> I got a picture frame of them. That's awesome. I love that. It looks so good there with the sunglasses. They look so awesome. So good job at doing your scavenger hunt. I think Andres needs to go wash his hands. So why don't we stand up. And get on our feet. Oh. Praise and worship! Me too. <laughs> so, a couple of announcements before we go. That's right. So, from now on, AO Kids is going to be start is going to start airing later because we want you guys to come to our services in person and we want to encourage you guys to start doing that. That's right. We can't wait to see you guys there. Additionally, we have our connect groups going on every single Tuesday, which is in 2 days. days. And you can find all this information at AO underscore kids, kids with, with a Z, Z, which is our Instagram. That's right. Also know that services are open for you guys, which we encourage, 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 encourage you guys to come. Come on Fridays, which start at 8 p.m. And come on Sundays, we have three services at 9.30, at 11, and at 12.30. That's right, that's right. And I'm so sad tomorrow school starts up again. I know, but don't worry, you guys got this. School is almost over. Just keep on going, 
keep on studying, keep on doing your homework, and I promise you it'll go by super right, duper guys. fast. Guys, pray for me. We're praying for you. We're giving each other this bomb. And one more thing, you guys might be thinking, hey, AO Kids used to air three times on a Sunday, but now we are only airing it one time, which is at this time, okay guys? So keep that in mind. If you want to watch AO Kids, you can always watch it on YouTube That's with right. AO Kids with a Z when we upload it later, or you can watch it on time where we're going to have one show airing every single Sunday. That's right. All of our episodes are on the AO Church Insta, I mean YouTube channel, or you search up AO Kids with a Z and they'll probably show up. We have a long playlist. So make sure you tell all your friends, all your cousins about it because we can't wait to see you guys next week right here. But before we go, one more fist pump. Fist pump! And one for you guys. Fist, fist pump! pump. Is it, it AO underscore kids with the Z? <laughs>